guys, welcome back, it's Shelby, and today I am making a ball gown. Hopefully all in one day, because I'm pretty much out of time. I'm going to a masquerade party on Saturday, my first ever masquerade ball, and I'm so excited for it. And I wanted kind of a beautiful, giant ball gown to wear, and those are really expensive, so I thought I would make my own. And I'm attempting to make it for under $50, which I actually think I'm gonna do, which is really exciting. Um, and basically, I ordered this fabric, it's my own fault because I didn't pay for the super fast shipping, but shipping was already like 16 bucks, so I didn't wanna like add another 10 to that. Especially because I got the fabric on sale and it was like almost doubled the entire purchase price. So anyway, it finally came. I was kinda hoping it would come on Saturday of last week, and it's Wednesday of this week and I need it on Saturday. But I'm super booked tomorrow night and I'm super booked on Friday, so um, basically I just have tonight to do it. So, but the fabric arrived. We're gonna open it up, see what we got. Hopefully it's awesome, I haven't even looked at it yet. But this is this is what it looks like. So, it's really lightweight too, which I guess is good because I'm planning on using all of this on the dress, so I want it to be lightweight. But basically, I'm going to open it up, we'll see what we got, and um, we are going to attempt to make a ball gown in one night for under $50, and uh, yeah, here we go. So. anything I'm not supposed to cut. There we go, there we go. Please be awesome. I should mention this fabric is all black because it's an all black masquerade party. So I'm shaking the table. It's not really colorful, but that's kind of the point. Oh, they weren't kidding about this packaging, man. Okay, where's the rest of it? I ordered two things. I ordered tulle and satin, and here's the tulle, and okay, there's another thing in there. I didn't see it at first, and I was just like, oh no, 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 no. Okay, there is, there's satin too, we're good. So we have this much satin, which I forget what I ordered. What did I order? I ordered this from a company called Tool Shop, by the way, which it was actually really, really cheap. I got like, um, Okay, this is a 108 inch wide um, tool bolt of 50 yards, and it was on sale, I think. It cost me 23 bucks. And this is 60 inch satin fabric, 10 yards of it, and I got it for nine. And then shipping was an extra 16 bucks. So, yeah, shipping cost more than this, almost as much as the fabric, and um, all of the reviews said that it shipped super, super fast, so I was like, oh, I'll definitely find with the standard shipping, like four to eight days. Um, yeah, so I bought it last week, Monday, and it is now a full week plus two days. So, I mean, it did come within the time frame, but I was kind of really hoping it would have been here by now, but everything looks good. The fabric, um, I guess I haven't opened it yet, but like just kind of peeking through looks good. And, um, yeah, we're gonna get going because we do not have a whole lot of time, but uh, I'm gonna bring you along on this adventure. If you want to make your own dress and follow this, I'll link um, what I bought and the website where I bought it down below along with my socials. Um, I'm really excited for this. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Let's get going. So I figure I will explain on camera what I'm doing because I'm basically like gonna do this at an angle so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I've got paracord. Um, which is 50 feet long. And basically what I'm planning on doing is I got the um, 104 inch width because it's gonna be a skirt. So I'm just gonna double it over on itself, but I need a line to kind of hold up the center. So what I'm gonna do is, I know this sounds so weird, but in my head it makes sense. Basically just cut this and take one of the tiny cords out of it. That's going to be 50 feet long. Lay the tool out flat. Put this horizontally halfway over it, put it over, and then stitch it in. I'm gonna secure it to one end with a safety pin because basically I'm just going to be stitching a little layer so that it's kind of like, um, you know, drawstring. It'll essentially be a drawstring inside here, and then I'm gonna go whew, and like cinch all the tool together. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. And um, the safety pin is going to prevent me from cinching it all together and having the little cord go whew, and get lost. So, that's the plan. I've got like four or five hours to make a dress and um, wish me luck, let's get going. 
So we've got our little strings inside. I just need one, just one. That's all I need, just that one. You can already tell it's not gonna wanna come out, but it does not have a choice. Not tonight, I'm not in the mood to play. Basically the idea of just using one of these cords is so that I don't create anything really thick inside and I thought of just using like a thread, but thread is weak and that could snap and I would be so sad to be like almost all the way done with my skirt and have the thread snap. Um, like I'm not sure I'd be able to take that, not, not under the amount of time constraint stress I'm under. So um, this cord is really, really strong and all the little fibers in it are really, really strong and I had it in my car. So I was like, you know what, that's what we're going to use. 50 feet doesn't seem like very long until you're like going through it all, but it's like, that's as far as I've gotten. This is already, uh, this is. My arm span is five foot nine and I'm at about half my arm span. So we're about three feet in of 50. This is already going not as smoothly as I was hoping. In my head, I kind of just went and it came right out, but um, you know, we'll see. I also wanted to like make this dress over the course of a few days and make this kind of like a how-to video of um, something really cool that you guys can make at home. Um, for relatively cheap if you need a ball gown or want a ball gown um, but given the time constraint and given the fact that I didn't have enough time to properly plan this out and practice and do everything I need to do to make this a straight-up tutorial um, we're just gonna make this a come along with me and we're gonna try it and I hope it works out and um, if I make some errors hopefully you won't because you'll see them and be like hmm maybe I shouldn't do that but hopefully I won't make too many errors because um, this is kind of my only option for this. I did not leave myself a whole lot of backup or a whole lot of time to finish this. I did not plan this real well. Um, but you know, that's life. Sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Wow, there's a lot of cord in here. If you're wondering if this is digging into my hand and making it numb, yes it is. And yes, I know there's better ways to like gather tool on a skirt. You can like do it on the sewing machine. You can do it a whole bunch of different ways, but I'm not that good on a sewing machine. So I'm not going to attempt it because I need the sewing machine to actually work for other parts of this dress. And um, I'm not gonna risk messing it up on something I can do by hand. And I'm sure there's like something else I could like buy at the store to help me with it. But uh, like I said, I'm kind of out of time, not real well prepared and um, this is kind of the only thing I'm thinking of right now, so this is what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm exactly 21 minutes into doing this, realizing it's not the best course of action, and I just realized there's absolutely no reason in the world why I need to leave the other five or six strands in there and just pull out my one strand. I can just pull them all out and separate them. Um, so, you know, brilliant light bulb moment there, or just like try to cut this, although the way it's woven, it's probably not gonna work, so. New idea, just remove all of the casing instead of one strand. This is how my hands look. They feel worse. Um, but yeah, so there's mistake number one. Um, also this like saving time cheat is not saving any time. I've, I've been at this a while. Done. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, that was a terrible idea. Don't do that, just find a strong cord. That took like probably 45 minutes. I have no fewer than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bad blisters on my hands. Can you see that? They hurt really bad. And now I get to start hand sewing. So um, don't do that. Uh, mistake number one. Um, but yes, we're moving on. Here's my tool. So I'm gonna open it up and just like really hope I was, ooh, there's my head, good enough at math to uh, get this right. Oh my 
God, the blisters on my hands hurt so bad. Double-sided sticky tape. We are hoping it does not look white enough. Yes, it totally is. Awesome. So this is doubled. It's actually super, super, super wide. Um, doubled there. And this is going to be the skirt. It's actually long enough to be more than the skirt. So basically what I'm going to do is lay it out like this. It's in half. Run the string through it and zhuzh it on the line. That's what we're going for. All right, we're starting. I'm laying out the fabric, putting the paracord up against the fold of it, securing it with a safety pin, grabbing a needle and thread, and we are getting started sewing. So here is what I'm doing. I put the cord in between the two layers of tulle, just right up at where it folds over, and I'm basically stitching a line underneath it so that it can't fall out. I know my stitches are not as close together as I want them to be, but you know what? At this late in the game, whatever. I don't even care. Um, so, close counts, and um, yeah, now we're going to start zhuzhing it together. Finishing up a few more stitches, and then basically just grabbing the cords and holding them while pulling the tool off to the side and gathering it into little, like, pleats for a little tutu effect. So I pulled over a chair from the dining room just to kind of put all of the finished gathered fabric over it to support its own weight, not realizing that this was a total game changer. This was the best thing I did in constructing this dress. The fabric eventually started being able to hold its own weight and then I tucked it in between the spokes of the chair a little bit. And what that did was create this clothesline effect because I had the other side tied up too. So the fold of the fabric is just hanging over the paracord and allowing sewing to be so much easier, so much faster, and not having to readjust the cord against the crease every five seconds. This was by far the best thing that I did and it just made it go so much quicker. So there's this seam in it, and I'm not quite sure why. I only see one, and I'm really, really, really hoping that means I'm halfway. But let's continue this way. Check out all this like nice fluffiness that I've already got going on. That is a lot of work, my friends. A lot of work. Believe it or not, it's getting there. Look at all that. I've mainly got it stuffed in the chair spokes here. Just, uh to hold it tight so that, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, it's working now. Definitely making progress. Almost done. If you follow it all the way back here. Not very much left, but I can't use all of it because I still need to make um, a piece for the top. And I might do like a little veil thing, I'm not sure, but big skirt, big poofy skirt. Can't wait to try it. All right, I think I'm finally done. I do have a little bit of tool left, but um, I think I mentioned it earlier. I do want to make some other stuff um, for the dress, like a top piece and um, maybe a veil. So uh, I need to leave that, but that's my skirt and I'm going to try it on and I'm so excited. So basically I've tied it here. I've tied it a couple times throughout just in case the strand breaks and I'm just gonna cut it and secure the end with a safety pin. I have no idea how I'm going to fasten this onto basically what's gonna be a belt because look at this, that's like kind of ridiculous, right? So I gotta figure out how to put that on a satin belt to tie it, but um, First step is to cut it and then I'm gonna try it on. This is it. Isn't that crazy? All hand done. So I left the string and the safety pins on both sides because I need a way to hold it. And like I said, I still haven't figured out how to attach it, but it's getting late. So um, I'm thinking maybe I won't finish it tonight and maybe I will just have to have late nights tomorrow and Friday to get it done. Um, yeah, so. Basically, we're going to put it on, and um, cutting it was really easy because there are no finished edges, so I just kind of tried to do a straight line. I'm thinking I don't want to sew it together just because that looks like a lot of work, so um, I think I'm just going to embrace the fact that it's got a slit and put it over one of my legs, and my ball gown is going to have a slit in it, so 
Awesome. Improvising. And here we go. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, I haven't even looked in the mirror yet. I don't know what I look like, but I can tell you what I feel like. I feel like a princess. I'm going to button my little safety pins here so I don't have to hold it up. Oh my gosh. It might actually be a little bit big, but it probably won't be once it's cinched in. So I'm not worried about that, but oh my gosh, this is incredible. It's not even see-through, which I was a little bit worried about because this stuff is so unbelievably see-through. Um, but I guess I put enough of it. Let me look in the mirror real quick. I've got my mirror behind me. And... Oh, wow. Yay! This is already just like the coolest thing. So I still need to make a top for it. Um, I'm cheating on the top, by the way, but you guys will see that soon. But I also need to figure out a way to make this a belted sash. So we're doing that, but I have a skirt. Oh, this is so great. So for the top piece, I'm laying out my tool and then I'm just folding it over on itself, kind of um, horizontally or, you know, lengthwise, and then folding it over again so that it's nice and narrow and not quite so see-through just like a little bit thicker on the fabric. And then what I'm going to do is safety pin it so that it doesn't go anywhere or get messed up or anything while I'm sewing it. Very important step. And then I'm just bringing the two edges together and kind of tucking one inside of the other to create kind of a loop or like a, almost like an infinity scarf type deal. And then I'm going to run um, just a kind of seam along it with the sewing machine just to connect the pieces and make it just a continuous circle. This is a lot, 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 lot of satin. That's good though because I want my belt to be one continuous thing because I need it to be really strong so I don't want any seams in there. So it's just going to be one continuous length. So I figured out how long I want my belt to be. I wound the measuring tip around myself a few times and then gave myself some extra length for a bow. I'm cutting it in half because I don't need the fabric to be this wide. And then I'm going to pin what I've got for the skirt to it. Just bring the toll up and um, just kind of safety pin it in place. I'm putting it right in the middle of the satin. So there's a nice long edge on both sides of the skirt, which is gonna trail down as the bow and back. And here we are attempting to sew it. So for the first run through to get the skirt and the belt attached, I'm not even worried about it being pretty. I'm literally just focusing on getting a seam through the tool into the satin. I did like roll the edge up a little bit, but um, as long as they're connected, I am not worried about anything else. I just want want them attached. Look at this craziness. That is ridiculous. I cannot believe that little machine just got that on there. It's amazing. Long way to go still, but basically done. You know, other than the long way to go. Kind of what I had in mind, a little bit, but it's on, and that's really exciting. Oh my goodness. Okay, second attaching. So now that the skirt is attached to the belt, I lay the satin back over the top of the tool so that it's kind of smushed in between two layers of satin. So satin on the bottom, rolled it over the top, and I'm pressing it down and just running another seam through that as well, just to make sure that it's really securely fastened. And once it is fastened, I'm going to just continue the seam on to the edge of the satin, which is where the bow will be. And I'm making these about five inches wide, so I just kind of tucked the edges underneath and fold it in half so that's the shiny side out. And I'm just finishing that on both sides so that I will have pretty ribbons to tie the bow in the back and secure the skirt to me. Oh my gosh, I am done. Two days, probably about 
eight hours total. But I'm done. <laughs> So for the top, I told you I was cheating. It's a camisole with the straps crossed over for a more narrow neckline. And then take the mesh kind of infinity scarf thing that we made. That's going to be the top. So just put it on. And then since it is larger than me, I'm just going to take the excess fabric and kind of twist it once and put it over my head again to create kind of a cool high necked look. And then just adjust the fabric down over the tank top just to give us some cool like texture and give a little bit of the um, kind of tool effect to the neckline itself and it'll blend into the cotton of the tank top. Now we're adding the skirts. I brought it around behind me and chose to overlap the two sides in front bringing the large ribbons behind me to securely fasten it in back. Just tying it uh, once and then adding a bow was enough to secure it. I like big fluffy bows, so that's what I did is I just, you know, kind of brought the fabric through and pulled until it was nice and fluffy. I had giant ribbons on mine, so they still hung down. And here's the big reveal. Ta-da! Isn't that beautiful? Oh my god, I'm so excited for this dress. I think it's so cute. You cannot help but feel like a fairy princess when you're wearing this. It was like the best thing ever. In case you can't tell, I'm absolutely ecstatic. But um, yeah, so that was my ball gown making experience. It took ultimately two days. It was about $50 and a whole ton of work, but I hope you liked the video. I hope you like the dress. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'd love to see you here again soon. As always, thanks so much for watching.